Welcome to West Country Wanderings. Today I'm at Coombe Hill Nature Reserve, but it's also a canal. It linked the River Severn to the town of Cheltenham, and the main reason for its construction was for coal, for coal to be brought down from the Shropshire coal fields along the length of the, the canal and to take it into the heart of Cheltenham. But things didn't work, work out quite like that. This here is the terminus of the canal. It never went any further inland. So we're actually about, I think, seven or eight miles from Cheltenham here. So you can understand why this canal wasn't a great success. The River Severn is just a couple of miles down that way. And we're going to walk down to where the canal meets the river. In fact, the lock at shelters the canal, if you like, from the River Severn, the tidal River Severn. It was because of the failure of that lock and the cost of it to be replaced, which caused the closure of the entire canal in 1876. Now originally barges up to 70 tonnes and as it says on the placard here at the uh, Wildlife uh, Nature Reserve, that's about two thirds of the weight of a, a blue whale. Nice analogy, I love that. Well done, Gloucester Wildlife Trust. This, um, they would have brought the coal up to this point. Not sure, it seems to be very sketchy on how the details of the canal was, uh, sorry, the coal was then removed inland. I'll find some stats and put uh, that information below in, in the usual way. But construction started in the early 70, uh, what's 1790, 1790s, and the canal opened in 1796. Though the towpath is quite muddy today, as you can see behind me there, Often if you arrive here, particularly in the winter time, also later autumn, you could find the whole of this area underwater. That's because it's part of the River Severn's floodplain. It naturally floods, which makes this an important natural habitat and wetland, which is quite unique in England. I'm just waiting for a break in the cloud. There has been some heavy showers, but I've just checked my uh, weather app and there should be a clearing within the next 20 minutes or so, and then we'll set off on the walk along the towpath towards the River Severn. Started to brighten up, rain stopped, so we're going to start our walk. Yes, I have got my hat, I didn't lose it. I know I didn't have it on the Cotswold Way 18, but uh, I just left it at home, that was all. Got the strap on, because it is a bit uh, gusty and breezy today, so hopefully it won't go flying off into the canal. Now, there appears to be a towpath on both sides of the canal, which is rather unusual. I'm not sure if one had just been manufactured after the canal closed to uh, as part of the um, nature reserve, or well, whether it's always like this in terms of towing those very heavy barges which we previously mentioned. Either way, it's useful because the one on that side is a lot muddier than this one. So, and I don't know whether that's because this one seems to be on slightly higher ground. It seems to be slightly raised above that one. And so that does make it uh, really useful in terms of our walk today. of odd things about this canal, not least of which, why did Cheltenham need coal? Now, if you're familiar with Cheltenham, you'll know that Cheltenham, although it's got GCHQ and a bit of a light industry, it's not certainly not a heavy industry town. And uh, I can't think that there would have been much heavy industry at all back in the late 18th and early 19th century. So why did Cheltenham need coal? I can understand why Shropshire needed to export the coal that came out of the collieries in Shropshire. But I'm not sure why they would have needed it in Cheltenham. That does seem strange. If I can find any more information on that, I will. But as I say, the canal wasn't a great commercial success. Sorry, the wind's got up. I'm glad this strap is on my hat at the moment because uh, it's likely to come flying off. But uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. Ooh, a bit of an uneven terrain here. It just seemed a bit of a, a mystery why, why this was built. In fact, I've only just heard of this canal. Um, as I say, as you probably know, if you're familiar with my channel, I am from Gloucestershire originally, although I've spent a lot of time in Devon and Cornwall, recently come back to this county. I'd never heard of it until I bought a book. The other day I went to the Mulvans, as you probably may have seen. Wow, that really is getting quite rough. 
And you may have seen that I went to the Mulvans and I bought a book on the history of Gloucestershire. I've got a couple of others, but uh, I thought to just kind of widen my knowledge about this uh, fascinating county that I uh, live in. And uh, he mentioned this canal and I thought, the Coombe Hill Canal, what Coombe Hill Canal? And I obviously know about the Stradwater Canal and the Gloucester Sharpness or the Gloucester Bartley. Uh, but I'd never heard of the Coombe Hill Canal before, so that, that was a strange one. So I thought I'd got the old map out, found it, I thought, oh, that looks really interesting. And of course, delighted to see it's also a wonderful nature reserve. probably thinking, well where is this canal in Gloucestershire? I'll put up a map up, map up from the uh, OS app so you can see. We're just off the A38, strangely enough, uh, but it's the main uh, road that comes out of uh, Gloucester heading north towards Birmingham. And we're, I think, just halfway, maybe a little more than halfway towards Tewkesbury. You just turn off left, a quarter of a mile down this narrow track, and here you are. Now this bridge is strange, clearly it was built a long time after the canal closed. I just see a seat on the other side. But I think this was uh, perhaps built for, for maybe for farm access. Though it's not wide enough for a tractor, it's probably just easy use of a farmer to go between one field and another. Uh, but it's useful just to cross, cross over to the other side of the, or the other towpath on the other side. But um, yes, it um, certainly uh, was long after the canal closed here. So I've now crossed over to the other side of the uh, towpath. This here is a corridor of nature. We've got trees, quite young trees, and obviously these weren't be, wouldn't have been here when the canal was opened. And it's just a, a wonderful corridor to, to explore along here. And obviously we have the bird life. We have lots of uh, berries here as well, which is just uh, terrific. Uh, it's a wonderful food here for the, uh, the birds to, to enjoy. As you can see there that the ground is starting to become very very saturated and uh, I don't think it'll be long before uh, probably before the end of the month that uh, these fields here will be completely underwater as will this path which is why I decided to come here now rather than uh, any later in the autumn because uh, this will be completely impenetrable unless you've got waders on. Notice that the canal, the other side of the trees here, and I'm not suggesting the peacock because it's wonderful for the wildlife, but I have got glimpses of it through the trees. It's a lot narrower here than it was at the terminus end, at the Coombe Hill end of the canal. And maybe it's because that when it was originally built, they built the canal that end to give it two or three canal barges widths so they could pass each other. Although I haven't seen any evidence of a winding hole. Now, if you're not familiar with canal te terminology, a winding hole is where a barge or a narrow boat can turn in the canal to enable it to go a full 360 back from whence it came. And obviously, because this is a, an end of the road, it's a no through road canal, if you like. It's just got the seven at the other end and a dead end at the other. Any barges would need to turn, but how that actually happened, I'm not entirely sure.
I noticed that there is a drainage ditch on this side here to my left, your right and I'm not sure if that was built when the canal was built or whether it's a, a later piece of engineering just to purely to drain the fields I think probably the latter but it looks almost as wide as the canal because the canal on this side here as you've probably just seen is actually quite narrow now behind me as you can see the canal has completely dried up and obviously there must have been uh, problems with uh, the water draining away it's probably just uh, puddled clay that lined the canal and that's often a problem and once the canal is closed and is no longer maintained problems with the water levels often rain it's obviously ironic that this is one of the wettest parts of Gloucestershire in terms of the floodplain but here the former canal that went to Coombe Hill from the River Severn remains dry Sadly, the towpath is becoming increasingly difficult to walk on in terms of uh, it's very sticky clay here and it's getting very, very difficult underfoot and I don't have waders and I don't want to slip up with my camera. So I decided to call it a day here. Now, I'm going to see if I can get to the River Severn via the road to see where it uh, comes into the, to the river. Well, I've just walked back to my car and come to a place called Wainload. That is the River Severn behind me and just up the road there is where our canal, the Coombe Hill Canal, entered the River Severn. So we'll just go and have a look. So yeah, the, the River Severn behind me there in that direction takes you down to the city of Gloucester some 8-10 miles and upstream the town of Tewkesbury where it meets the River Avon coming down from Stratford-upon-Avon and like it says on the sign there the River Severn is a very dangerous river throughout most, most of its length apart from when it's a little stream up on the mountains in Wales which we'll see later yeah, next year when I do the Severn Way but uh, yeah, it's a very, uh, even in the tidal, non-tidal sections, it can, has very dangerous currents. Don't recommend anybody uh, swimming in the River Severn at all. Um, yeah, so the, here, really nice spot here with the red line here at uh, Wayne Lode. Never been here before, so it's really interesting. So I'm just walking along this field, which I think is owned by the inn. And they uh, have got a wonderful caravan park there for, uh, for people with camper vans and indeed tents, a bit breezy to put a tent up today, it's, it's really, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if the camera's shaking, I'm, I'm holding it as steady as I can, but uh, it, it is pretty breezy as UK, I've, I've just literally parked my car in the, the in car park here and uh, it was a little bit too treacherous to continue along the towpath walking, it was too muddy, it's the squelchy clay mud was very very uh, difficult terrain for walking any further so I've just driven down here I know it's cheating a little bit but uh, just wanted to come and see where our canal meets the river so that's our canal so it's coming in here and there would have been lock gates in fact the only lock on the entire canal what was at this location I'm not sure if this bridge here, in fact the bridge, this bridge here most definitely was not here then and uh, this is where the position of the lock gates to protect it from the River Severn would have been to keep the level of the water in the canal steady. We'll just have a quick look at the bridge and then we'll have a look exactly where it met River Severn. Now interestingly on the other side of the bridge, where we saw it just now, we have these tidal gates. Now they're not lock gates, nothing to do with the, the canal working because obviously it was long since abandoned in, what was it, 1867 I believe. These are flood prevention gates 
and they are currently in the locked position. Now this is here obviously when the River Severn swells, which it probably is doing at the moment because all the rain we've had, uh, lots of rain over the past few days. The water will then come back up this channel, which is the former canal here, and work its way back up the canal to flood the fields around. Now that will happen to some extent anyway, but these gates are to prevent the worst of that happening here. Now this is as close as I can get, so there's our canal channel there. And if you follow it through, just behind that, uh, I think it's, that, it's called an OC tree, isn't it? It's a bit like a willow. Just behind that there is the River Severn, and that's where the canal joined the river. Our canal again is just to the uh, other side of this willow tree on this side here. And there you can see the extent of the River Severn and how wide it is. Very unforbidding river and unforgiving river as well. There is a bank here. I might be able to get closer to the canal there, but I'm certainly not going to risk it because the canal, the, sorry, the clay is very slippery and I'd end up in the river and that's something I definitely don't want to do. And uh, so the river continues along there. So from here on the banks of the River Severn at Wainload between Tewkesbury and Gloucester, I'll say goodbye for now. I hope you enjoyed this canal video on my channel, West Country Wanderings. Until next time, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, all the best, and hope to see you all again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye for now.